Jace Tunnel here. Today we are for beach coming. We're actually looking at the beach. Look at all this stuff we have down here. But have you ever wondered what the actual value of this is? Like the value of you going out to the beach, uh, whether you're finding seagrass like we're finding today, or you're finding some cool shells out here. Uh, we actually have at the Heart Research Institute a group that is looking at the value of, of what this is. Now we can figure out Okay, how many people are staying at hotels when they come to the beach? How many people are going to restaurants? They can come up with a calculation and they can say, okay, the value of the beach we have is yada yada. But what about for like beachcombers? What about us that are, we're out here? What's the value of me being able to come out, look at the ocean uh, and, and get that, that feeling? Um, what is the value of that? Well, so we've got, I've, I invited some folks out here from the Heart Research Institute that have a whole program where they calculate that stuff up. So uh, let me introduce you to them and uh, you let me know how you think about uh, this and what your feelings are whenever you're at the beach. The Community Resilience Group has a variety of projects and programs that assess values for a variety of topics. Uh, for example, we're working with the General Land Office for the Beach Watch Program for water quality monitoring. We're also working with restoration, specifically oyster reefs. Secondly, we, are, we do studies related to livelihood transitions and so how people gather uh, benefits from the environment, not just for their well-being, but also for their livelihoods. In the Community Resilience Group, we focus on connecting human well-being to natural resources, and that is the topic of values. There are different ways to measure values. They could be monetary and non-monetary, and so monetary are the things like, how much would you pay to buy a beach pass so you can hang out here? So that is a value that we can measure and we can capture, and we know um, we can report on. But there are other values that are not captured through money. So for example, feeling happy, the feeling of calmness, those are hard to report as money. But we can report those to what we called uh, qualitative measures. And the work that we do in the community resilience tries to capture both the monetary and non-monetary values that people have for natural resources, including beautiful beaches like these. One of the projects we're really excited about right now is what we're loosely calling the Beach Watch Project. So the General Land Office has a program called Texas Beach Watch and they routinely come out to beaches like this one and monitor for bacteria. There's different ways that people are exposed to that kind of bacteria, you know, depending on the activities that are taking place here on the beach. For example, we have surfing and fishing and wading, walking, dog walking, running, all sorts of activities. They want to know what's going on in our Texas beaches and when there's a lot of people on those beaches, what they're doing, why they're there. And that's because that will help inform them about their list that they then update depending on potential exposure to pollution. Um, we're also interested in understanding how people value beaches because that, as in general, helps decision makers determine um, how to move forward with programs like the Texas Beach Watch. And if there's other ways we can use that information to inform not only General Land Office, but other state partners as well in terms of how people value their, their space and their habitats here on the Texas coast. And one of our scientists on our team is Dr. Cora Lozada, and she's gonna share a little bit about some of the work she's done with fisheries. Like my coworkers have already said, we do a lot of um, the mixed methods, social work, and that's, that's where really I come in. So here I look at um, how people's perceptions of not just beaches, but some of these other uh, restored habitats, for example, a project that we are doing with the Nature Conservancy on oyster reefs, how their perceptions change, not just on how they use the beach or why they value the beach, but also on the restoration itself. Um, and how these changes that we see over time, whether it be from a changing habitat, whether it be from uh, changing policies that affect our beach use and uh, restoration, 
really, uh, I just take people's words and I turn them into data. So that's what perceptions are, right? That's what mixed methods is. That's the qualitative part of what I do. I turn people's words and their feelings about what is going on in their life and how, you know, they, they're um, for generations being fishermen and that's changing now. I turn that into data that we can then use and mirror with the hard quantitative data um, that we see and we gather uh, from the other groups at HRI, right? So that's just a little bit of what we do. Okay, wow. What uh, awesome information. Um, me personally, as somebody who goes to the beach all the time, and you know, we always have issues coming up about uh, rights for uh, getting on the beach, you know, what is the value of that? Because, you know, uh, maybe it's more valuable to put a condo up right on the beach and prevent other people from getting access. You know, it, you know maybe it's, it's not even um, that controversial, but uh, that is always a possibility. So knowing that there's a group out there at the Heart Research Institute looking at this stuff so that management, good management decisions can be made about us beach coming and ensuring that we get to do that into the future as well as the next generation so important to me so i'm glad we were able to talk to them today hopefully you learned something new and we'll talk to you next time bye